Long ago, in a lush green forest, there was a huge neem tree. The neem tree was a home for countless birds in the forest. Since it was a cool place, many birds preferred to stay in the tree. An old vulture lived near the tree. It did not have a nest on its own. He was half blind as he was old. Every day, he used to watch the birds living happily on the neem tree. As he did not have friends, he felt very lonely. One day, a yellow bird was catching the vulture from the neem tree. The bird felt sad, seeing the poor vulture. The yellow bird decided to speak with his friends and bring the vulture to the neem tree. One day, he was discussing with the other birds of the tree. Dear friends, I have a request and I think you will accept. What is that? Have you all seen the vulture in the next tree? Yes, I see him every day. Why is he like that? He is old and half blind. He cannot even search for food. I want him to bring to our tree. What do you say? Of course, but he is a vulture. Since he is blind, I don't think he can harm us. All right, let's bring him. Let him stay with us from today. The sparrow, the crow, and other birds joined together and met the vulture. Welcome, dear friends. What has made all of you to come to this tree? I am pleasantly surprised. Dear friend, we are not happy to see you suffering. When we all have good food and good nest, it's very sad to see you in a dry tree, toiling without food. So, we have decided to give a nest for you in our tree so that you can enjoy the lovely breeze and have a good company of friends. I am greatly delighted to hear this news. I thank you for your kindness. You can join us from tomorrow. A nest is kept ready for you. Next day, the vulture went to the big neem tree and made his home. He was very happy there. All the birds helped him with fruits and nuts. The vulture was very kind to all the young birds. One day, a cat saw the vulture on the tree. It was a long time wish for the cat to taste the young birds of the tree. But it was not possible for the cat as he was not able to go near the tree. After seeing the vulture, an idea sparkled in its mind. He slowly approached the vulture. Great, sir. I am greatly delighted to see you here. I know you are the largest of the birds. Perhaps I can say you are the king of birds. The vulture was extremely happy to hear this. Thank you. Sir, how do you stay in this small nest with the other small birds on this tree? Dear friend, all these young birds are my friends. They help me a lot since I am not able to see properly. That's why I stay here. Oh, I'm sorry. I also want to help you. Let me bring some good meat and fish for you every day. No, no. Don't trouble yourself. I get everything here. Sir, you are a powerful bird. You will certainly need meat. What these birds are going to get for you? They can get you only fruits and nuts. Dear friend, I am happy about your concern. But I don't want anything now. I will come and meet you tomorrow. The next day, the cat came to the tree and handed over a small fish to the vulture. It had a nice time chatting with the vulture. The crow, who had accidentally returned that afternoon, saw the cat chatting up with the vulture. 
He was waiting patiently for the cat to leave and he met the vulture. Friend, why is the cat coming here? Why? What happened? Don't you know that the cat is the biggest enemy of the birds? You have invited him and having a good time with him. Don't make things serious. He is a poor cat. He wants, just wants to be friends. That's why he has come to me. He is very cunning. Better keep him away. All the birds trust you and are leaving their young ones in the nest here. I am much older than you and I know whom to believe and whom not to. The crow left the place. The cat started coming regularly to meet the vulture. After a week's time, the cat killed one of the young birds, ate him and threw the bones in the nest of the vulture. In a few days, it ate around four to five birds. All the birds were shocked, but they were not able to find the culprit. On searching, one of the birds found some bones in the vulture's nest. The bones of her young ones are in the vulture's nest. The birds came rushing to the nest of the vulture. The vulture was not able to see properly and so did not see the bones in the nest. Vulture, we trusted you so much, but you have shown your true colors. You should not be in the forest for another minute. Get away from here. Go away right now. Dear friends, I did not do anything. Please don't drive me from here. I saw a cat who was talking to the vulture. Perhaps it must have been him. Please leave the vulture. You, you keep quiet. The bones are here. So he is the culprit. The birds drove away the vulture from the nest. The vulture was helpless and was in tears. Wrong friendship will always lead to bad things Once on a big banyan tree deep in the forest lived a family of cranes, a mother and her little ones. The mother had to fly out and bring in food for the little ones every single day. There also lived in that same banyan tree a big cobra who was always looking for food. When he saw the little crane babies by themselves, he knew they could not fly away from him, so he ate them. When Mother Crane came back, she was very shocked to see them gone. The following month, she gave birth to more crane babies. Again, the evil cobra helped himself to all of them. Mother Crane was very disturbed and angry about this and went to see the crab who lived nearby. Though cranes fed on crabs too, she felt she was the only one to talk to. Oh dear crab, I come to you in great distress. There is a huge cobra who feeds on my chicks when I leave them alone in the nest. I have lost so many of my children. I do not wish to lose them too. Well, there's nothing one can do. Cobras need their food after all. Oh, oh, crab, please, you must help me. You are a mother too. How can you stand by and watch your children being killed? Please help me. I have no one else. Why should I help her? Don't cranes feed on us too? I have an idea. There lives a mongoose nearby. If you leave a trail of meat pieces leading up to the cobra's hole, the mongoose will follow it and kill the cobra. And your children will be safe from then on. It's a brilliant plan. Oh, thank you. You are most welcome. 
So the crane mother brought in a whole lot of meat and began dropping pieces before the mongoose's home, one by one, till she formed a path leading to the cobra's home. The cobra was caught unawares and was devoured by the mongoose in no time. Now the mongoose spotted the crane's nest above. He quickly moved up the tree trunk and ate the poor little cranes as well. The crane mother lost her children again simply because she didn't have the foresight to realize that a mongoose feeds on cranes as well. <laughs>